I was watching Great Scott the other day where he created a custom PCB of a lithium charging circuit that also had voltage boost functionality. And I thought to myself, I've seen that idea before and I had when I went through my new stuff box of things I've bought from eBay and not yet looked at properly, I came across this. And this is pretty much a standard TP4056 module here um, on the right hand side and then on the left hand side connected to it is a simple boost converter. So looking at the uh, TP4056 side of the board, we've got a micro USB input and a smoothing capacitor there on that input. Um, two resistors here for the two different LEDs to say that it's charging and it's charged. But as you can see, only one of those LEDs is populated on this board, whether that's how it's meant to be or whether that's just how this one has been sent. I'm not sure because both resistors are in place. Another capacitor there on the battery side of the circuit and this final resistor here which is the current sensing or the current limiting resistor here which uh, we might need to take a closer look at. And uh, on the other side of the board the boost function here, this is the output, the V out minus and the V out plus. We may need to uh, spin that round to see it a bit more clearly. We've got a potentiometer for actually adjusting the output there. There's an inductor here which is actually slightly hanging off the board. A couple of uh, capacitors to uh, smooth things around and I believe the uh, diode there is underneath the potentiometer. So that diode is obviously vital for the uh, boost circuit and uh, there we've got a little controller IC, a little boost converter controller there. Um, which I think is unmarked. So now that I've dug this little module out of my box, well, perhaps I should use it in a little project. And uh, I've got this LiPo cell here. It's a 500 milliamp hour cell, 3.7 volts. So lithium cell that will go up to 4.2, which uh, the TP4056 should be limited to 4.2 volts. Um, but what can we put it inside? Well, I thought... It might be worth um, upgrading my cheap non-contact infrared thermometer here um, with a lithium iron cell. And I think inside here there's plenty of space for both the LiPo and the, uh, well, the module itself. And then it should all quite neatly fit in there. And look, I will even be able to get into the USB slot there. And it can all sit in quite nicely. And my uh, cheap thermometer will be uh, lithium powered. Now before I uh, connect all these things together, I do need to consider that this particular module doesn't have any cell under voltage protection. There's no DW01 IC on here or anything similar that prevents this uh, cell from going too low in voltage. Um, so I have chosen a LiPo and I believe it has its own protection module sat in there. Now I'm not going to take this apart to find that out. I guess future testing will confirm whether it does have that protection IC or not, but uh, I'm willing to uh, take the risk with this uh, LiPo cell which is left over from another project. I also need to consider this resistor here, which is uh, in this typical application circuit, the resistor here called R prog and that sets the current at which your cell is charged and uh, here's a table here we can set it anywhere between one amp all the way down to something like 130 milliamps so this is a o1b resistor now i'm not familiar with the alpha numeric code so let's find a, another website which explains it and handily i've got one here and uh, 01 apparently is the decade value of 10 and uh, if we look a bit lower down it actually gives an example here 01b as the marking well 01 means 10 and b means 100 and uh, effectively you times those two together 10 times 100 
gives 1k, 1 kilo ohm. So this is a 1k resistor. Now going back to the TP4056 data sheet, well, that presumably means it's getting somewhere around the 1000 milliamps. And now my 500 milliamp cell, well, that's going to be too much to charge it at 1000 milliamps. So I need to find a resistor and replace this one here on the TP4056 module with something, I don't know, 5K or something like that. I'll see what I can find in my resistor drawer. So in my uh, drawer of resistors, I have found some 10K, but I've also found some 4.7K. So we've got effectively the choice of somewhere between 300 to 250 milliamps if I use the 4.7K or the 10K, I should get somewhere around the 130 milliamps. Well, I think I'm going to go for the 4.7K somewhere in here. It's certainly less than 1C charging rate, so I think that will be fine. So with the uh, module stuck down to this stand, hopefully a bit of heat on this resistor and it will pop off. There we go. Clean up those two pads. Uh, yeah, well, I think that's the resistor there. And I'm hoping a uh, resistor bent in this fashion should be able to uh, solder across those two points. And uh, hopefully it will be a strong enough connection that it doesn't just drop off one day. So under the microscope here, hopefully I can place those two legs. and just solder that resistor in place yeah do you know what i think that's worked so there's my new current setting resistor in place and do you know what i think that might just work so the next thing i want to do is cut off this connector on my lipo battery um, a little bit nervous don't want to cause any shorts this is probably fairly high drain as it's come from a quadcopter so I'll just cut the one for now and perhaps we'll get that soldered into the battery connection and then I'll cut the other one just to make sure that nothing goes awry let's uh, just take some insulation there off that wire right we'll just tin this battery connector wire there we go that's that side done and I'm expecting to put the battery underneath the uh, TP4056 module so we'll uh, put those wires in from the bottom and solder that in so with the positive connection complete let's do the same with the negative now because the lipo is connected to the module the output of the boost converter should be working I would imagine so let's Place that across there and at the moment it's set to 10.96 volts so uh, I need to tweak that pot a little just a tweak 9.08 I'm sure that'll be absolutely fine so I think I will be sticking this uh, onto the lipo cell itself but first I need to solder up the outputs um, and then we can fit it all inside here. So I will need to uh, cut this connector off, uh, ready to connect to the output here, and then hopefully we're nearly there. So I've tinned the two cables from the infrared thermometer and actually I've pushed them through from the back of this module. Just need to tack them in onto the output. Careful not to short anything with the soldering iron or the solder and uh, theory has it then in that situation this should work so and indeed it does so uh, it's all working quite nicely so far so uh, we'll take the tape off the back of the module stick it down on the lipo 
and then we need a bit more tape to hold it all inside of the infrared thermometer I think but it all should fit relatively nicely hopefully in fact we might not need any tape at all the extra wires no perhaps we do need a bit of tape let me sort that out so that was quite a nice little half an hour project wasn't it upgrading my infrared thermometer to be powered by a lipo cell using a boost converter here and the tp4056 to charge it i was able to change the resistor um, connected to that tp4056 so that we could reduce the charging current going into that lipo now there is a question over the quiescent current of this boost converter. There's no way of switching it off. So it may be that next time I come to this, it is flat anyway. But I guess time will tell. Links to all these items will be in the description below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.